So year seven, yesterday we looked at questionnaires. It's a type of a survey. Now, out of questionnaires we get some data. So we must look at how to display that data today. Um, before we start displaying data, we need to look at uh, samples and whether a sample is biased or not. So a sample is, for instance, if we wanted to uh, survey all the students in CCS, we wouldn't, we could survey them all, or we could get just a sample of them, so a number from each class, and then they would be representative of the whole population of CCS, and that is what a sample is. So often you see in the whole, in a country, where instead of surveying every single person in the country, uh, for instance, coming up to an election, they survey a sample of the population to see which way they're going to vote. Otherwise, it would take too long to get everyone to answer um, a questionnaire. So they just take a sample and ask them. Now, the problem with sampling is that sometimes they can be biased. and They can ask uh, too small of a group or they can ask the wrong one particular, only one type of uh, the population. So sometimes it can be biased. Judging by the size of the group is a good way to see if a sample is biased based on the size. So if the group is 100 in size, so there's 100 people, let's say, in a year group in a school, how many would you have to sample and ask questionnaires in order for it not to be biased? So if you square root 100, so what number by itself gives 100, you get 10. And that is the magic number. It must be more than 10 for the sample size not to be biased. So anything less than 10, it could be considered to be biased. Okay. So, uh, that's a little bit. Generally, there's not too much of that discussion in year 7. We deal with it more in year 8. But just giving you a taste of what bias sampling is. So uh, now what we do need to look at organizing data into something called frequency tables. Now, I hope you've done this uh, in previous years, but if not, we will look at it very briefly here. So I have an example question up here. This is a survey I did, and I did a questionnaire. And it was number of pets in a household, and I gave it to... Uh, I think it's 11 people. I gave it to 11 people and then I asked them how many pets they had in their household. So when it's written like this, it's not very easy to see any patterns or trends and analyze the data. So we write it in a frequency table. So we need to draw a table. So if we draw a table, green here, uh, we have the number of pets, and I'm going to have frequency here, and that's F for short. I'm going to remove this stuff so I can fit in my table. Okay, so I am looking at well, what do I put in the number of pets? So you put in all the options that were given in the answers. So I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and up as far as 5. So I need 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. There are all the possible outcomes of the survey. Now I look at the frequency. So how often each of them occurs? So 0 occurs twice. That's two zeros here. So I'm going to put in zero, 2 for the frequency of 0. 1 occurs, oh, it also occurs twice, 2 occurs twice, 3 occurs 1, 2, 3 times, 4 occurs once, and 5 occurs once. Okay, and that is a frequency table. Now there's an example of a different frequency table using class intervals on the uh, help sheet which I will give on manage back. So uh, for class intervals where you say, so for instance, for height, 
um, instead of saying exactly 163 centimeters, you put every height between 160 and 165 in an interval. And anything, so anything in between those two goes into that interval. Because that helps when we want to draw a column graph or histogram. So I want to display this frequency table data on a histogram. So histogram, a bit like a bar chart, just uh, the columns are kind of stuck together, which is a bit different. Okay, so I need to figure out which goes on the x-axis and which should go on the y-axis. On the x-axis is going to be the number of pets. So this one, the one that goes up steadily. So number of pets. So there's six options from zero. One, two, three, and five. Okay. Each one of these then uh, will have a frequency. And I've looked at my frequencies. It doesn't go beyond four. It actually doesn't go beyond three. But I'll get put it up to four anyways, because that's going to be as high as I need to go with my bar graphs or my column. All right, so zero goes up to as far as two. Now, what we notice with histograms is the next one will be joined on to the previous one. One also has two. Two also has two. 3 goes up as far as 3, so that one increases up here. 4 goes to 1, 5 goes to 1. So you probably have done something like that in year 6, and that's just a bit of revision. Okay, so you can see, and there's three examples of that in the accompanying notes, and you can look at that. Okay, so that is um, everything. The the, sorry, the class intervals, there is an example of that. They'll only really come up in blue level questions, so class intervals, and that's saying between two um, uh, different uh, heights, for example, in between, it sits in somewhere in the middle. All right. Uh, you may be asked to comment on the data. More than likely, is there an even spread? So this would be pretty evenly spread. Uh, you can be asked, hey, do you think it's a bias sample? Um, well, you can see, does it make sense to you? Uh, this seems like pretty reasonable answers. If I saw something like 200 in here as one of my answers for number of pets in the household, I may hmm, start to think about it. That's something called an outlier, um, if you get a, a crazy value. Um, but I think that this makes sense, and I could say that this looks like a, a fairly acceptable selection of a sample of population. Okay, so uh, read through the accompanying notes to this before you start the questions. So the questions will be at the top of the worksheet, and then there's some accompanying notes, and then there's three example questions at the end of the worksheet. Read through those, and each um, color, green, yellow, or blue, has two questions to do on these. So uh, get those done before the next lesson, if you can. Should get them done during this lesson. If you have any questions, I'll be available at Little Meets as always. Okay, good luck.